welcome back to Water and Climate. Today our focus question is, how does water move on a slope? So think of a slope as any slanted surface. So if you take a look at my experiment here, I'm using a cereal box as my slope. So what I'm going to do is going, I'm going to take some water drops with my eyedropper and I'm going to just place them on a cookie tray with some wax paper. Just line up a couple of different water domes and then observe when I take the cookie tray and I give my area some slope. Watch what happens. Okay, let me do that again. I can take my water drops, my domes, I can put different sizes, I can put a couple of drops at one time right on my wax paper surface which makes it nice and smooth. And then as soon as I give it some slope, observe what happens. Okay, so boys and girls, we're gonna try that one more time, but this time I added some food coloring to the water so that you could see the water domes a little bit better. Okay, so all I added was some blue food coloring. It doesn't do anything other than change the color of the water. Okay, so again, I'm lining up my water domes and watch what happens when I add some slope. Okay, so boys and girls, take a look. For this experiment, I wanna see if the size of the water dome changes anything. So what I did was I added one drop of water, then two drops, then three drops, four drops, five drops, and six drops. So you can see this one right here has the most water drops in it. Does that change anything when I give it the same amount of slope? Okay, so what I'm gonna do for this experiment is I'm actually gonna do it in slow motion so you can observe the different size dots or the different amounts of water in each dome. Okay, so I'm gonna do that again this time. So the smallest water amount is here all the way over to the biggest water amount. And I'm gonna do it regular time so that you can see. But in the last experiment, when we did the slow motion, you should have noticed something about this side with more water compared to this side with the smallest amount of water. So take a look at that again. Okay, so for this experiment, I'm changing another thing. I kept the water drops about the same size, but what I'm changing is the size of the slope. So what I used was cereal boxes, but for this tray, there's only one cereal box underneath, and for this tray, there's two cereal boxes, so this has an increased slope. So let's see if we turn the trays at the same time, what happens to the water drops. Okay, so I'm gonna do that experiment again. Scientists in real life always replicate their experiments and do them over and over again to see if they get the same results. So let's try that again. Remember this one has a smaller slope with one cereal box, where this one has two cereal boxes, so the slope is increased. Okay, third graders, for our last experiment, just for fun, make a prediction. I have a rainbow of colors with the smallest amount of water increasing from this side all the way to this side. So the smallest amount is the red, all the way to the largest amount of water is the purple. Make a prediction of which water drop you think is going to get to the bottom first. Ready, set, 